Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll look at how to use CSS Position Absolute. For this example I've set up a simple layout with three dark blue squares positioned on top of a grey background. By default, when no position property has been specified, elements are given a position of static. This simply means that they remain positioned according to the normal document flow. If an element is given a position of absolute, it gets removed from the normal document flow and no space is created for it. Effectively, position absolute makes the rest of the document behave as if the absolutely positioned element doesn't exist. Let's have a look at what this means. We'll target our middle square by first targeting its class of square and then using the nth of type pseudo selector with a value of 2 to select the second item of this type with a class of square. So we're targeting this element here. We'll give this middle square a position value of absolute and then take a look at what's going on in the browser. As you can see our layout has changed. Square number 2 has been removed from the normal document flow and the space that was previously available to it is no longer available. If we temporarily hide this square, we can see this more clearly. Let's give it an opacity value of 0% so that it's hidden from view. What's happening here is that squares 1 and 3 are being positioned as if they were the only elements inside their grey container. If square 2 didn't exist at all in our HTML document, this is how our layout would look. If we bring square 2 back into view by removing its opacity property, we'll see that it's also being positioned as if it too was the only element inside the grey container. It's being positioned right in the centre here because it's following the flex alignment properties that we've set on its parent element by justifying content center and aligning items center. If elements 1 and 3 didn't exist in the HTML, this is where element 2 would be positioned. So when giving an element a position value of absolute, we're telling that element to ignore all of its sibling elements as if they didn't exist on the page. So item 2 is ignoring items 1 and 3. At the same time, we're telling the other elements to ignore the absolutely positioned element as if that also didn't exist on the page. So 2 is ignoring 1 and 3, and 1 and 3 are ignoring 2. So what does this mean for us? As you can see from this initial example, absolute positioning allows us to layer elements on top of one another and break them out of the normal document flow. When combined with top, bottom, left or right properties, Absolute positioning allows us to place an element anywhere we like on the page. Let's give square number 2 a bottom value of 20 pixels and a right value of 20 pixels. If we have a look at this in the browser, we'll see that our square is now positioned in the bottom right corner of the window. It's 20 pixels away from the bottom edge and 20 pixels away from the right edge. By default, an element with a position of absolute will be positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor. If none of its ancestors have been given a position value, then it gets positioned relative to something called the initial containing block, which is basically the viewport or browser window. So what is its closest positioned ancestor? If we look at our HTML, we can see the second square here that we're targeting. We've given this a position of absolute. Its first ancestor, or containing element, is the div with a class of container. Our square is nested inside the container div. In this case, the container would be known as its parent. If we go one step further back, we can see that our container div also has a parent element, which is the body. So the container is contained within the body. As the body is the parent of the container, and the container is the parent of our square, the body is effectively the grandparent of our square and is therefore one of its ancestors. 
One step further back still, we can see that our body element also has a parent, which is the HTML element. The HTML element contains the body, the body contains the container div, and the container div contains our square. So what does closest position ancestor mean? At the moment, the only element in our document that we have given an explicit position property to is our square number two. If we had given a position property to any of its ancestors, the closest of those ancestors, starting from its parent and working back, with a position property, would affect the placement of our absolutely positioned element. Let's demonstrate this with a quick example. For simplicity, let's target our square's parent element, the container div. We don't want to change the container div's position in the normal document flow, but we need to give it a position value so that it becomes the closest positioned ancestor. The perfect choice for this is position relative. With position relative now applied to our container div, let's see where our square has been placed. As you can see, it's no longer at the bottom right of the browser window, instead it's at the bottom right of the grey container div. It's being positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor, which is the grey container. When there is no closest position ancestor, let's delete position relative from the container div, the element will be positioned relative to the edges of the browser window. This is a very important concept to understand when it comes to absolute positioning. Before wrapping things up, let's take a quick look at scroll behavior with absolute positioning. With our square positioned at the bottom right corner of our browser window, let's see what happens when we scroll down. As you can see, our element doesn't remain in the bottom right corner when scrolling, it's effectively attached to the document and so scrolls up and out of view with the rest of the elements on the page. The same is true when positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor. Let's put position relative back in here on the container, so it's now positioned here within the container div. As we scroll down, it stays positioned within the grey container div and is hidden from view as we scroll beyond it. The alternative to this behaviour is position fixed, where the element will be fixed in that position even when scrolling, so it isn't affected by the default scroll behaviour. Position fixed is a topic for another video, so please take a look at that if you want to learn more. I think that just about sums up the basics. To recap, when an element is given a position of absolute, it is removed from the normal document flow and no space is provided for it. We're able to place an absolutely positioned element anywhere on the page using top, bottom, left or right properties. The element will be positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor. If none of its ancestors have an explicit position value, the element will be positioned relative to the viewport or browser window. To position an element relative to one of its ancestors, give that ancestor a position of relative. This won't affect the position of the ancestor element, but it will allow you to place the absolutely positioned item anywhere in relation to this ancestor. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.